Um, yep, yeah, please turn off uh, your media if you'd like to remain anonymous. Uh, we are recording this. Um, and uh, yeah, and um, use your first name as well. So welcome to our end of year celebration. Woo, it's the end of 2020. Woo. Um, so uh, yeah, we, um, we are just gonna go over a presentation and at around like 7.30, we're gonna start uh, networking and games and we'll end around uh, 8.30. Um, so uh, we're gonna start off with an introduction about Women Who Code, then talk about the past year, some stats and events that we had and uh, what our plans are for the new year. And off to Elizabeth. Okay. <clears throat> so what is Women Who Code? We are a global nonprofit dedicated to inspiring women to excel in technology careers. For me personally, it has been a safe and really welcoming environment to explore becoming a, a coder. I personally started um, I personally started volunteering before I even went uh, to school to become a coder. And Women Who Code has been there for me even now that I am a mid-level software engineer. So we have 27 countries, 78 cities, and we are expanding. Uh, the map is not 100% accurate, but we have uh, chapters all over the world, including the Philippines and Taiwan and Chile and Nigeria. So it's a really, really amazing community. And if you look at the bottom, you'll see we have over 16,000 members in the New York City chapter. Uh, the Code of Conduct, we take this very seriously. At any event, please feel free to direct message um, whoever the host is, or if you recognize uh, another member of the New York City leadership team. You can read it if you go to uh, womenwhocode.com, our code is there. But basically, you know, we want everyone to feel comfortable and we won't tolerate um, bad behavior or harassment toward anyone who uh, comes to our events. So just be kind, be nice, like I know you all are, and we'll all be good. Woohoo, 2020, year of remote work. Look at all of us being virtual. Uh, my favorite part of working remotely is my own private executive bathroom and anything I want to eat and secretly taking naps in the middle of the day. This one's on me. So one of the things that I really like to do is be able to look at the year and pull out some metrics and see how we're doing uh, quantitatively, which is a word I'm pulling out from my data science fellows. So, you know, we only had a couple in-person events at the beginning of the year, really just in January and February, we had six of those. Uh, we then transitioned to our virtual events. And once we got the ball rolling, we got rolling pretty fast. So we had 32 of those. One thing I'm excited about that I wanted to share is that our average in-person RSVPs for events was 113. And with our virtual events, we actually went up to 130. Uh, if you're curious, the most RSVPs for the year was for how to pass your programming interview because apparently people were like job hunting or something in 2020. Whatever, me too. I'm actually signing my offer tomorrow. Woo! Uh, so we had 395 for that. And we had in 2020 a total of 4,757 RSVPs for our event. That brings us to a grand total of 38 events for 2020. So there was a lot of work um, that was put in uh, behind the scenes, um, especially uh, transitioning to try to make these virtual events possible. And we just want to like go through and uh, highlight some of the uh, the leads and uh, people who brought you uh, specific events. Um, so first off, we'd like to thank our uh, our social leads of 2020. 
uh, Katie Holman and Jennifer Gong. Um, they uh, kicked off a social media strategy in October, and we saw an increase in 100 Twitter, fo Twitter followers, 300 Slack members, and the activity um, in our uh, in our Slack uh, tripled since the start of the year. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, I'll just give a moment to Katie or Jennifer if they'd like to say anything um, about uh, specifically about some of the, the challenges that they faced or uh, things that they found like really striking or anything that they want to talk about their work. Yeah, um, I just want to say that I've actually had a lot of fun uh, working on our Twitter strategy. Uh, it's always great to find cool links to share with you all. Uh, and if you don't follow us on Twitter yet, you totally should. Our account is Women Who Code NYC. Um, and also, anytime uh, you have a cool link that you think would be great to share with other members of our community, just feel free to share it with us in Slack and we can put it on our Twitter. And I'll just add, you know, it's been been really fun. You know, um, this was my first year working with Women in Code. Um, I just became a software engineer this year. So, you know, I found a really awesome community and um, loved working with Katie, Kelly, Danielle, and the rest of the leadership team uh, throughout the year. Um, so nice to see our Slack grow so much. And um, uh, I really enjoyed actually putting together the Leadership Spotlight series for all of you. Um, hopefully that helps you get to know uh, the leaders a little bit better as well. So thanks and it's been a great year. Great, thank you so much. I personally also saw so much more engagement uh, with the spotlight leads. Um, uh, so some past leaders of 2020, uh, Marianne put together uh, two algorithm events at Betterment and Brenda um, uh, took some time to focus on her family, but uh, before she did that, she did put together the engineering solutions uh, for product and user growth at Dolby. Uh, NYC Leads of 2020, Luisa brought, um, put together Bring Your Own Language. Uh, if Luisa is here, would you like to say uh, any words about uh, 2020? I don't see Luisa. All right. <laughs> Kwazu Yang, uh, she brought you machine learning in UX design and transitions in tech talks. Um, is Kwazu uh, here? Hey, Cindy, I am here. I would say I'm thankful for being part of the leads team and getting to know some of you all who are inspirations to me. And I also really like this moment from one of the events this year where we had a new member who just joined and hopped into one of our events and openly shared about her imposter syndrome and we got to like coach her through it. And then she joined the Slack and has been active on Slack. So I'm like really happy that all of these different parts are coming together for people to feel safe in this space. Cool, that's great. Um, and lastly, uh, Kelly. Kelly brought, uh, put together 10 coffee code breaks. Uh, she also brought you AI chatbots, intro to security, capture the flag, and uh, quit learning frameworks like there's no tomorrow. Uh, is there anything you'd like to say, Kelly, about your hard work? Uh, that it was not done alone. So I wanted to just take a minute to shout out everybody who's helped, especially with Coffee Code Breaks, which is um, reading off this list. Daphne, Mikkel, Heidi, Chesna, got that one right. Uh, Kelly S, Laura, Jen, Katie, and then most importantly, Danielle, because she and I got this off the ground. And to everyone who said that they've really enjoyed Coffee Code Break, thank you so much. Thank you for telling me that. I enjoy it 10 times as much. And that is not just because there were 10 events. It has just been the absolute joy of my year to put it together. And I'm so excited to continue it in 2021. Uh, and directors. So directors uh, do even more behind the scenes work, uh, but they, they have pulled uh, a lot of uh, events together as well. Uh, Camilla uh, brought the Corona uh, Equalathon events, the, and as well as the machine learning in UX design and transitions in, in tech um, Camilla, uh, would you like to say a few words? No, Camilla. Got it. Uh, and Elizabeth, Elizabeth, uh, actually, I would like to 
to say that Elizabeth really uh, tried to find the need in the community and fill that gap. Um, I was impressed that she put together three remote hiring events, uh, a talk about managing remotely, um, and uh, as well as React performance and uh, writing automated tests in JavaScript. Uh, so what was uh, memorable for you in 2020, Elizabeth? <laughs> oh, you're making my heart feel so warm and fuzzy, Cindy. Thank you for that. Um, I, in, you know, in 2019, like my biggest accomplishment was speaking at uh, two conferences. Like I never, I never spoken at a conference before. And in 2020, what I've noticed is that I'm just getting so much better at reading and understanding code and troubleshooting independently. Um, and I found that instead of having to go to other people for answers, I'm actually now able to help out even senior engineers and find answers for problems. So I'm so excited about that. And the other thing I just want to mention is I had one of the coolest team building events where I contacted the Bronx Zoo and we set up a virtual uh, live meet with uh, three different animal types, penguins, a porcupine and a warthog. And it was really awesome. And I don't think we ever would have thought to do that if we weren't all remote. Wow, that's great. Uh, next up is me. Uh, I'm brought to you tonight's event. Uh, I've also brought uh, just a hodgepodge of uh, full stack uh, events here, uh, ranging from uh, thinking like an architect, encryption, chatbots, uh, pub sub applications, and Redux best practices. And lastly, for the win, uh, Danielle has brought a whole host of security talks, um, as well as front, front end talks about CSS specificity and progressive web apps, uh, how to pass your programming interview, open source uh, Hacktoberfest, and engineering your resume. Um, Danielle, is there anything you'd like to uh, say about the past year? Um, I, just that this is, I mean, putting together the events, at least for me, that's, uh, you know, I've done this enough that, um, you know, that's not a whole lot of effort for me. Um, most Mostly, I just want to thank anyone that helped me with these events. So speakers, presenters, um, let's see, I'm trying to think. Oh, we had um, a great organization help us with the Capture the Flag tournament. Um, and all of you for attending these events. I mean, you know, if we didn't have all of you, we would just be on a Zoom call and talking to no one. So um, yeah, we are excited to keep doing this next year, uh, you know, with, with and without COVID. Um, thank you for your patience when, as we kind of figure out how to take our amazing community online. And uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you. All right, so what's in store for 2021? Uh, so first off, we'd like to announce a change in leadership and welcome our newest director, Kelly. Um, so she will be joining us and um, all five of us will be uh, the directors in 2021. So if you have any questions, um, you can reach out to uh, and all of us. We'll be uh, happy to be resources to you. Uh, and lastly, uh, I our focus next year is going to be to continue delivering high quality virtual events and connecting to the community digitally as well as expanding the leadership team and uh, helping our volunteers develop leadership skills. Uh, thank you to our 2020 uh, hosts uh, and our virtual partners who made all of the recruiting uh, events possible. And I'll just point out that Esteem uh, did a virtual hackathon with us. Everyone else there is for the remote hiring event. Uh, and a shout out to the uh, to the volunteers, speakers, and mentors, and uh, workshop leads. Uh, you put a lot of effort in this year, and um, yeah, thank you for sharing your knowledge and encouraging women um, everywhere. Uh, 
so lastly, please remember to tweet us uh, at Women Who Code NYC. Uh, and if you'd like to speak next year, um, please uh, cl click this link. Uh, I think Kelly's going to paste it uh, in the chat, but uh, uh, you could also try to type it out and um, become a, a speaker for next year. Uh, I would like to say we highly encourage speakers. Um, even if you're, if you're afraid and you think that you're not a, a good person to give a talk, um, you know, do it anyway. Uh, you, you know more than you think you do and your perspective is valuable. Even if it's, uh, you know, what my experience was with this technology, um, it's useful to everyone. Uh, and uh, with that, I'll hand it over to Kelly for our networking and games. All right, first and foremost,